Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Monday, October 16th. Hope you're doing well. Joined now by Rob Cassidy, Rivals.com, uh, National Director of Basketball Recruiting. And Rob, we talked about this a, a week or so ago, uh, Liam McNeely's decision coming soon. Uh, everyone thought Indiana was the, the faraway leader, but that never seems to mean as much anymore. But uh, Indiana does land Liam McNeely, and and it's uh, not only do they land him, they land him on, in a forum that is uh, very big and and uh, is a great commercial for Mike Woodson and the program. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that you know, I think everybody was kind of taking notice of what Woodson has been doing there on the recruiting trail. But you know, it's never bad to to have it there on, on national television <laughs> either, uh, just to remind people. I think, and you know, it's it's also there's, there's something to be said for kind of the pipeline that continues to be built to the, the best high school basketball program in the country. Uh, you know, those are the kind of perks that come with <laughs> come with that. When you start landing guys from Mount Vert, uh, the spotlight gets brighter. Absolutely. And there there are yet another uh, member of that program that they're going after. And Liam McNeely mentioned him, Derek Queen, who was standing behind him, actually, when he makes his commitment. Uh, so that can't be bad for Indiana as well, although he still has a visit coming up. Uh, probably, I think that's, I guess that's this weekend at Maryland, and I'm speaking of Derek Queen. Yeah, and that's the big one for him. I think everybody just thought it was going to be Maryland uh, for Queen, and from what I've heard from people around there, they are using, if not their whole NIL budget, to try to lure him over a good chunk of it. Um, so I think it's going to be tough to stand toe-to-toe with them here. Uh, with Queen, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, but I think Maryland still, in my mind, is the team to beat there. We'll see how the visit goes. I like Indiana's chances more with Boogie Flan than I do with Derek Queen, to be honest. Yeah, and that's kind of uh, been my thought as well. And even though it's a slim margin that I, everybody I keep talking to, it's still they're in the lead by a slim margin. And I, 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 I mean, I, I hate to put a prediction out right now, but as of right now, I, I think they, they look very good to land boogie fland yeah no i agree with you too uh this high school coach is i think he'll be back from italy sometime this week if he's not already back today uh, i believe he's, i thought he got back sunday did he not okay maybe he got back sunday i've been out of town it's you know it's, i haven't had time to talk to anybody i've been at wooten in las vegas so it's i haven't had a moment to breathe so he might be back sunday but i would uh i would expect a, a decision in pretty short order before he left he had told me that the plan was to do an announcement at the school of Bishop Stepanek there in White Plains, uh, and that they would do it sometime after he returned from vacation. Uh, so I would expect it in the next week or so. Hopefully not this weekend, because I have told my family I will not be working this weekend. So if that happens, I, that, that will turn me into a liar. Oh, well, we'll find out. I mean, as we uh, said earlier, I'm like, it, you can never tell. Uh, guys are expected to go someplace at the last second. Uh, I, I, Flory Bedunga, I think, was a surprise. I thought he was going to head to Duke, and yet uh, Kansas is able to get him. I think that was a uh, big reason was uh, NIL. Kansas is one of the best NIL basketball programs out there, along Indiana, probably right behind them. But uh, it's... Landing Boogie Fland would be a, a gigantic uh, land for Indiana as well to go along with Liam McNeely. And you heard Liam talking yesterday when he committed to Indiana that he will be uh, in the ear of Boogie Fland. And that, that this guy's committing to a school, I don't think matters as much. But when you have them uh, actually saying, hey, man, th this would be special between us, I think that matters. Yeah, I think so, too. You know, I think that uh, definitely they're going to listen to their peers. I think the biggest thing with, with landing plan, if Indiana is able to do it, in my estimation, would be if you, then if you if you zoom out and you look at the snapshot of what's happened here. They held off Kansas to land McNeely, and they're going to now hold off Kentucky. <laughs> you know, I think that just says so much about the big picture of where they kind of stand in the recruiting world in the era of name, image, and likeness. If they're able to back-to-back -back beat those two programs for, for guys that they want, you know? There's sometimes to beat Kansas and Kentucky for guys that are kind of on the periphery that they don't care much about. But this is standing toe to toe with those programs and winning. And, you know, if they can do that in two straight recruiting battles like this, I think it says a lot about the big picture. 
Yeah, uh, because you can actually go back to McKenzie and Baco, which was a battle between IU and Kansas. So this is actually two straight uh, big time battles that they've won over Kansas. Not that Kansas is hurting in any way. Uh, but then you mentioned Kentucky and Alabama is there for the services of Boogie Flan. So uh, to, to but to beat Kentucky uh, heads up in a battle that is is another head turner, uh, I think, for, for people and for uh, for kids alike. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, this stuff tends to compound. That's kind of how it happens. Now, it can all be undone if the success on the floor isn't there. But success in recruiting, and I've always said this, tends to compound because, you know, kids see this happen and they want they think something's going on and they want to be part of that. And it's, it's, it's happened as long as time. I mean, you saw it happen a few years ago at Michigan where Juwan Howard amassed the number one recruiting class. Now, he didn't do much with it. and It's kind of fallen apart on him because, you know, it kind of fell fat on the floor. But if you can get something started, it can, it can snowball on you quick. Either way, good or bad. And in this case, it seems to be snowballing in a positive direction. Yeah, we can look at uh, Kentucky and John Calipari. I think he had the number one recruiting class nine out of ten years. Um, came up with one national title out of that. But they won a lot of games. Yeah, yeah, they sure have. You know, it's good to have that talent on your side. You know, it's, it's, in, 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 you know, it's incredibly difficult to win a national title. Uh, that's the goal for everybody. But, you know, <laughs> uh, it's baby steps at this point, right? You know, it, it, if you can – you can show a little progress every year, uh, I think, and, and keep kind of that positive trajectory going while you're landing these top kids. Uh, it can become an every year thing pretty quickly, I think. What is Indiana getting in in Liam McNeely? They, they've gotten McKenzie and Baco, which he, he his plan is to be in one and done, but we don't always know that. Uh, Jalen Huchifino didn't come as a projected first round draft pick. He becomes that, gets that opportunity to go. Uh, McKenzie and Baco would like to be a one and done, but uh, let's say he's not. And uh, then you've got Liam McNeely and those two guys, which is great to have. But what does uh, Liam McNeely bring to the Indiana roster? Yeah, he might not have the pro upside of an Mbako just because of the size and everything. But when I talk about Liam, you know, I always talk about one of the more well rounded players in the class. You know, there's nothing that he does badly. Uh, you might not look at him and be like, okay, he's the best shooter in the class, or he's the best defender in the class, or the best ball handler. He doesn't do anything the best. But there are just no holes. And every time you think there is one, he closes one. Uh, he's become a much better defender this year. He's become a much better shooter in the last year and a half. Uh, and he just keeps evolving. And it's getting to the point where in a sport, you know, in modern basketball, versatility is king. And he's become so versatile because he does so many things so well. Uh, he's one of these kids where you go and you watch him, and I've seen him play probably 30 times now. And he never seems to have a truly bad game. Like, even, like, top players sometimes. Like, you go see a DJ Wagner or something, you'll come away and it's like, oh, that wasn't his best effort. But he doesn't have a game where he hurts the team. Uh, and I think that's huge. You know, he's a very consistent, stalwart player. And, you know, I think it's, it's good to have one of those in the fold, obviously. I think Indiana has to land uh, two out of these three that they are going after, of course. And Boogie Flans seems to be the uh, – more a better chance than Derek Queen, but they're not out of the running for all three. What if they were to land all three besides the level of talent that would bring in? What would that say about Mike Woodson and what they're doing? Yeah, I don't know if there's much of a difference as far as a perception standpoint from landing two out of three or landing three out of three. I mean, either way, I think it's a statement. I, mean, I think, you know, I think when this cycle started, if you would have told me that. Mike Woodson was going to land two five stars. I think anybody would have taken that, right? I think this is kind of become a product of expectations where everybody's looking at the three now. But I mean, two out of three, three out of three doesn't matter. It's still a positive cycle, I think. And I think it's uh, it's something that's going to get kids in the future excited about it, especially when you think about where the kids come from. If it is Flan and McNeely, you know, then it's another Montvert guy and it's a guy from Stepanek. And, you know, those aren't schools that produce a D1 guy once every two or three years. You know, this is these are schools that every single year have a recruitable guy for the Hoosiers. Yeah, and Mike Woodson at first was uh, a lot of people thought that he was not going to be able to uh, do the things that you need to do to to land these guys because you've got to travel, you've got to do this, do that, and he has proved a bunch of naysayers wrong already. Yeah, I think you know rightfully so. When you look at a guy who hasn't really had any head coaching experience in college at his age, I think that you know it was natural to be like, is he going to do what it takes, especially in a world of recruiting that's evolving quickly you know and usually you know credit to him some guys of his age can fall into a a lull of the, that's not the way things should be done or that's not the way things have always been done so i'm stuck in my ways and he didn't do that uh he's adapted 
and he's shown the ability to recruit in this in this landscape. Uh, and I think, that, you know, he deserves a ton of credit for that because, you know, I'm the guy that's getting old, too. And I find myself uh, stuck in my ways sometimes. And sometimes, you know, it's an evolve or die situation. And he's chosen to evolve. And, I, you know, I think he's, he's reaping the fruits of that now. Rob Cassidy is joining us, uh, the National Director of Basketball Recruiting for Rivals.com. Let's and say uh, uh, Derry Queen decides to go to uh, Maryland, whatever. This still opens up the opportunity for Indiana to land some other big time uncommitted player out there. Yeah, it either does that or it, it allows them to save a scholarship to the transfer portal. You know, it's it's <laughs> that's they've the already got one of those right now. They're they're only using 12 out of the 13. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't have a list of who that might be in front of me. I'm actually standing on the side of a construction site outside of a coffee shop <laughs> where the power's turned off on me. Are you but getting yeah, whistled no, at? Like, Are you so getting cat a, calls? This isn't, a, this isn't an especially deep class. Um, 2024 anyway. 2025 and 26 are much deeper, uh, especially in the big man department. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't know where they would go if they miss on Queen, if they would go ahead and try to find another big or if they would wait. Or maybe try to take a transfer. I, I have no idea where, what would happen there. Yeah, that that'll be the question. But it gives them uh, a, a lot more um, uh, cachet, I guess, behind what they could chase. Because there's there's some guys out there, and uh, I, I don't know if you just know off the top of your head, but who are some some guys that are uncommitted that would fit fill that role? That that uh, role? I, there's no way I can go off the top of my head right now. My brain is so zapped. I'd have to have my spreadsheet in front of me but it does like you said it does give them some cachet because some of these guys you know you can point to all right come in and play with boogie uh play with liam you know boogie's kind of known as one of the best distributors in this class you know he makes guys around him better he has a long track record of proving to do that and if you have him in the fold and you have liam in the fold i think it's easier uh to recruit guys with options you know uh well and one name which i know indiana's fans are still thinking about uh, that it, I, I just don't think that uh, Rivals is going to miss out on, but is is uh, Mr. Harper. Yeah, I you know I think that's kind of a long shot with Dylan. I talked to him this weekend. He was out at Wooten in Vegas with me. Um, he, <laughs> I think he's still going to Rutgers, although things are getting tense over there uh, because he's going to take some more visits. He was back there on unofficial this weekend after he left camp. I think that – Auburn is in play there. I think that Duke uh, has re-energized. They were in to see him two weeks ago. I think, and, and Kansas. He wants to visit Kansas. I don't know if that will happen. Um, I think that those three are more likely. I think that's kind of a pipe dream for Indiana at this point. I guess you never know. Uh, you know, once you get Plan and, and McNeely in the fold, maybe he becomes more attractive. But as of right now, I'd be, I'd be shocked if he landed at IU. Uh, I'm just looking down the list. You've got Patrick uh, Ngamba. Uh, from Fairfax, Virginia, he's a center, big six ten guy who is not committed right now. He's, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty much. I, I think UConn likes where they stand with him. Uh, they're in there. Kansas State's in there. I, I, Kentucky has made a play there. But yeah, it's going to be. Uh, it, it's it's and it's so weird because you don't know what your roster is going to be next year anyway. Um, because you know what you do have. And but you don't know who might be unhappy and hit the portal. I, I think that there should be a way for. I think they should sign two-year deals now. If you have, since you have nil and you're getting all this money, especially these big bigger players, they're getting some serious serious coin. Man, we're talking six figures. Um, there there should be a way that, that a two-year uh, I hate to call it a contract, but a two-year contract to stay at the school unless they turn pro or something like that. You know, I'd have a hard time agreeing with that um, just because coaches, you know, if coaches can't can leave anytime they want, as long as that can happen, I, I feel like players should have the ability to leave anytime they want. Now, I know it's not good for the game probably uh, to have this much turnover, but as far as just like a pure labor practice standpoint goes, as long as these coaches can jet um, and they have the ability to jet, the players should have the ability to jet. Well, that would be a caveat too, that if the because I think that was in there before. But if a coach leaves, then that that makes that null and void that you have that opportunity. But other than that, I, I would like to see a two year agreement uh, unless they turn pro or the coach leaves. 
I think they're going to have to maybe just for the sake of the sport, go to it, whether, you know, I agree with it or not. I, you know, the turnover at this rate, like some turnover, I think is just fine, but like having to rebuild your roster every year is, I just wonder at long term how that affects fan bases, you know, getting to know these players. And, you know, I, I don't know, like, I don't know how it'll go. It might not have any effect. This is new to everybody. So I guess we'll see how that plays out in the long term. And and I look at uh, the possibility for Indiana if they were able to land a boogie flare, and then you've got Xavier Johnson who is going to be leaving uh, and could ultimately be the top point guard in the Big Ten. Uh, he's not get, being recognized as such right now because he, he didn't play much of you last year. But we, we don't know how that's going to turn out. Regardless, he's going to be gone. Uh, let's say they get boogie flanned and he's a, a one and done. That This is the kind of momentum they want for landing a guy like Jalen Harrelson. Yeah. You know, anytime, you know, you look at, you look at the one and done situation, anytime you can do it, I think it used to be looked at as a bad thing because you want continuality on your roster, but especially in the, the, the transfer portal era, it's the best thing you can have. It's a walking advertisement for you when the only thing kids care about is NIL money and the ability to get to the league. You have to almost have it. And if you can point to it, like they can point to it with Hood Shafino it can pay off for you very quickly, especially in the transfer portal. And I think that helps with Mbako. I think that if you can say, okay, it didn't work out for you at your last stop, come here. And this is what we can do for you. And you have stuff to point to. I think that you can become a juggernaut. As far as NIL, I've said that uh, Kansas is is, uh, in no question. I think they are the number, their school is number one as far as NIL, because they're similar to Indiana. They're, they're a basketball school while their football team has been more exciting and fun to watch. Uh, they're still a basketball school, and that's where their focus is, as with as it is with Indiana. Uh, but I think that they're those two are not that far apart in NIL, and I I don't know Kentucky is is close to that, but I think those are the top two schools when it comes to NIL. Yeah, no, I agree, and you know, let's call a spade a spade here. It helps that Kansas has kind of become Adidas's flagship school, and you know, I'm not insinuating that Adidas is paying kids. They're definitely not. Well, anymore. I'd hope anymore. Not. <laughs> anymore. But, I mean, it definitely helps that they have that in their corner, you know? 